is the... Uh, oh, that's my mother, brother, and his Cossacks. Yeah, Alina Peretti, nice. now in her 90s, has had the most remarkable life. But like many of her generation, she was reluctant to talk about her past. So I mean, that's quite a rare photo, isn't it? Of your, yeah. your mum and your... Father. Yeah. yeah. Alina's son, Jack, oh. is an investigative reporter. This is you. It was sort of the biggest story I'd ever come across, and yet it was lying right in front of me, and I'd never bothered to investigate it. And then my mum was diagnosed with dementia, and so we started, we started. I just got my phone out, pressed record, and started talking to my mum, and it all just came flooding out. September 1939, and Germany invades Poland, the start of the Second World War. In the chaos that followed, families became separated, flung to all corners of Europe and beyond. This is Alina with her parents. Her dad, Michael, part of the Polish resistance, ended up in London. Alina, with her mother, Olga, was deported to a labour camp in Siberia. I didn't feel um, frightened. I think it was an adventure. Alina's mother was determined to get back to Poland to find her other children, a girl and two boys, stuck in occupied Warsaw. She paid smugglers to get them back. And she was saying, if we're going to die, we die together. It was, uh, it was her decision. Warsaw was a devastated city, invaded, bombed, occupied by the Germans. Alina was reunited with her siblings, but now faced the full horror of war at first hand. They were hanging people on the street for other people to see. They were drowning in horror. August 1944, the Warsaw Uprising. For 63 days, the Polish resistance fought their German occupiers. It was street to street, house to house. But eventually, the resistance was put down. Civilians were rounded up. Alina, her mother, and older sister, Juta, were brought to a courtyard to face a firing squad. You had people lying down dead, and you have us standing up waiting when they're going to turn gun in our direction. There is no one day that I don't think about it. Every day this image comes to me, every day. Alina, her mother and sister, were put on a train to Auschwitz. They were questioned by a German officer. It would be the last time Alina saw her sister alive. He asked, who speak German? And my mother said, my daughter does. She shouldn't have opened her mouth. It is still difficult to fully comprehend exactly what happened at Auschwitz. More than a million people were killed. Almost all were Jews, but some 13,000 ethnic Poles were also transported to the camp after the Warsaw Uprising. You know, death was around us, so we were not surprised to see somebody being killed. By the time Alina arrived at Auschwitz at the end of 1944, the mass killings had stopped. The camp was being dismantled. But medical experiments were still happening. Alina was given a series of injections. I asked them what these injections are for. And they were in a camp, in a situation of illness. There is a lot of people. We have to protect you. So, you know, I went willing to have one to be protected. You know. The injections were actually part of a mass sterilization program, a failed attempt to make Jews and ethnic Poles infertile. The doctor who injected Alina called her his little bird. It is the title of Alina and Jack's book. Tomorrow is Holocaust Memorial Day, 77 years since Auschwitz was liberated. Well, I think it's important that we remember to do anything so it doesn't happen again. To prevent it happened. You just say, said, you know,
bloody hell, you know, I'm very lucky <laughs> that I came out of it, you know. It's uh, unbelievable, you know, that when you found out, actually, that we survive.